Hey traders, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Wednesday, January 20, 2021. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What else do we have to say other than what do we have on our hands? The Biden breakout? So far, on Inauguration Day, that is what we have. The market broke out to new highs. And next up on the docket is, will we see follow-through or will we see failure? We can see a tweener. A tweener would be like a nothing day where the market doesn't get very far. It becomes what's known as an inside day. That's the third possibility, obviously, on the table. If we see follow-through, it's a bona fide breakout. If we see failure, it's a failure. We'll have to wait and see, but today we have new highs on our hands. Now, I'm not saying this is or isn't the case, but it will be interesting to see if Inauguration Day actually marks a top in the market. I don't know that it will, I don't know that it won't, but it's an interesting time period, it's an interesting date, it's an interesting symbolism. We'll find out in short order whether that has a chance to happen or not. Is there anything jumping off the page on the daily chart? Well, obviously, the trend is your friend until she dumps you. We're at new highs. The energy from the longer-term trend on all time frames, all charts, is up. That's the pull. The pull will continue. The trend will continue until such time as the market puts in a sign and or signal of a trend change it will begin from an intraday perspective it will morph onto the daily chart and so on until such time as that happens where the character of the market will change it will likely be caused by an event we may be able to point back at something and say yeah there was the event that caused the turn until such time as that happens the trend remains up it remains intact and it remains relentless is there anything else material that happened today that we can draw some information from other than an end of the day sell-off just by a little bit into the closing bell not much it was a trend day up it was a gap and go that was it how about inside the numbers as a result of the gap and go type of scenario that we had today there really wasn't a lot going on inside the numbers We'll get back to stocks on the move and we'll pick apart a few charts. But in terms of the commentary, we're going to run through the notes. I'm going to let you at your own pace, pause the video, read the notes and double check the work back on the charts. But the reality is it was a gap and go. It was a trend day. That's not necessarily a trader's best friend. So we have to take whatever the market gives us on each and every given day. And today the market gave us one of these days where it's not a trader's paradise. And that is what it is. So you see the pre-market commentary. They were hanging around the big fat round number early in the morning, 3,800. They were above it, but not that far away. That became a thing of the past real fast. So you can see in the early thoughts, the only thing we had to hang our hat on were the old highs. The old high in the March ES contract, 3,824.50, and the SPY, 381.49. Above there, you get into no man's land, but that's what was on the table. From here, what I'm going to do is just let you read the notes, pause the video at your leisure, go back and double check the work at the charts. But in the interest of time, we're going to cover some other stuff tonight that we don't normally cover because we don't need to spend a lot of time inside the numbers. Some days we get a whole lot of activity inside the numbers. Other days like today, there's not a lot we can do about it. Stocks on the move, we'll take a look at HGEN, Beyond, we'll take a look at USB, which is US Bank Corp, and we'll take a look at BE. First one on the books was HGEN getting its haircut at the opening bell. We came up with two numbers. It opened below the first number, that's deactivated, yet the second number is activated, 1839, comes into it, spikes it through by a little bit, snaps right back right back above the first number does the deal in fact does the deal and then some and you can see what happened from there you can see the importance of the numbers goes back and forth in between both numbers until it gets back above the first and then basically runs sideways the rest of the day no great shakes but it did produce a good trade 
just so you understand because it's a low price stock so you have to understand the magnitude the high in this candle the second 15 minute candle of the day is nineteen dollars and sixteen cents the entry was eighteen thirty nine in case you don't have a calculator handy it's seventy seven cents or over four percent in minutes How about beyond meat this one doesn't count it did it into the end of the day Getting a haircut at the open, it came down, but it never reached the number that was on the board bright and early. It proceeded to bounce and come into it later. You can see it was, in fact, support, but nobody's taking that trade into the closing bell. U.S. Bank Corp, haircut at the open, 46.27, came into that number, tried to recover from that number. You can see once below, that number became resistance went down toward the second number and it took too long to get to the second number. No relative strength against the market today for U.S. Bank Corp. It just was classified as a dud. How about BE, Bloom Energy? This one's classified as a heartbreaker. We see these from time to time. It happens. This is the deal. The low in the first candle of the day was 3769 against 3767 put on the board bright and early they ran all the way up to fill the gap the high in this candle was 3998 and that of course is plus shipping and handling it's a rocket ride but two cents in front of the number when they come back later into the number it's a no trade it's off the table it was off the table the minute it pulled up short and traded away What's going on over in Camp IWM? Well, here's what we've got. We've got one of those doji candles. Can it mean a trend change? It might, it can, sometimes it does. There are other signs and signal of a trend change. And there's also accompanying data that we like to see along with certain signals and signs of a trend change. So we're not 100% sure whether that's meaningful or not. All those other signs and all the other data involved is found in the course at Lazy E Mini Trader. But here's the thing with this one. Yes, it could be a potential signal. Yes, a trader could short against the high. It's not that far away. If you had to lose, you're going to lose small and fast. But here's what we don't have. We don't have blow off volume. We have a trend that's up. What's the more dominant thing? The trend or a one day candle? We've been over this before. The more dominant force is the trend. It's going to outweigh a one day candle. The daily trend is up. The weekly trend is up. The monthly trend, the quarterly trend, the yearly trend. All the trends are up. That's more powerful than a one day candle on a daily chart. That just is what it is. So it's of note. It, we can put it as a puzzle piece. We can put it on a table, but we have to put it in the right frame of mind. The IWM, as we know, is my favorite market leading indicator. It was not leading the market today. So again, that's of note, it's a puzzle piece and it's on the table. What about my second favorite market leading indicator, a number one canary in the coal mine, the folks down at the transportation department? Well, guess what? Up pretty strong today, 225 points, almost 2%, basically knocking on the door from the high from the other day. The trend is your friend until she dumps you. There's nothing wrong with this particular chart. Therefore, you move it along. How about the Qs? The Biden breakout. Up 2.5% over 7.5 bucks on the Qs. Very strong market. A lot of it had to do with Netflix. Netflix was screaming higher after earnings. But yet, what difference does it make? Price is the absolute arbiter. And the Qs are once again at new highs. They're in no man's land. You just move it along. What about the XLF? That was down today. That's interesting. Not all that much. 16 cents, half a percent. Again, you have to put in perspective where they are. But again, are they going to close below the former high for the third week in a row after reaching the general area? Maybe. Doesn't necessarily tell us anything just yet. Because what if they just continue eating time off the clock, going sideways, right around the old highs for several weeks. What's that going to tell us? What that would be telling us is that they were building energy to bust through and close, make new highs, close at new highs on a weekly basis. We don't have that yet. We're just talking around things first. What about Smash Mouth? Why was that down today? Well, I don't necessarily have an answer. We don't really care 
what, if any, the reason was that it was down, what we do care about, it was different than other stuff. Now, we know that Smash Mouth or the SMH or the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index is a leading indicator of the tech space. The tech space was up strong today. The SMH was down a half a percent today or a touch more. It's interesting, becomes a puzzle piece. It's a small one. It's on the table. Everything that happens that turns out to be something material starts somewhere, and it generally starts unnoticeable to the naked eye. What about gold? Here's a weekly chart of gold. We'll use GLD. Now, we talked previously about the 170, and then we put up on the board the 165.34. Those of you that remember, remember it came off the monthly chart. So, from a monthly perspective, as long as they're closing above at the end of each month, 165.34, she's okay. Any close below 165.34 at the end of a month and there's lower prices at hand. Gold and silver and other metals, they're volatile. They're influenced by a lot of different things. They move in the middle of the night. If you're an owner for the long term of gold, you have to stomach some downturns. You have to stomach some periods of time where it's not gonna be the favored nation. From a longer term perspective, this chart is in an uptrend. Now, what happens if they give up the 50 period moving average and they give up this pivot low, which is important from the 4th of December? The low is 166.03, and if they close a week, this is a Friday close, below that number, there's trouble in paradise, and we're gonna have to bust out some lower numbers. From a longer term perspective, that is our line in the sand. What about silver? Is there anything different on silver? And the answer is not really. The chart looks different, but it isn't an uptrend. It isn't a long-term uptrend, but this is something that you have to realize. What happens if silver and gold take a downturn? Well, here's that same pivot, and that low here is $20.60. If you lose that low, you're probably going to lose the 50-period moving average, and you're probably going to run a test of this breakup candle low at 1823. Well, guess what? What's below that? Isn't that essentially a former breakout area? What do markets like to do? They like to come back and test former breakout areas. Now, we don't know that this will happen, but if it did happen sometime in the future, we don't know when, I'm just saying if you ever saw this. And the reason we're talking about this, because I don't talk about gold and silver all that often, so I'm kind of giving you the long view. I'm giving you the long game on this one. That's the spot right here. If you found it there, that's a buying opportunity. I don't even have to know what's going on at that time. I don't really have to see what's going on at that time. I just know under normal garden variety market conditions using the 80-20 rule, 80% 80 of the time or better, the market's going to find support in and around that zone, period, full stop. What about the Dixie? Here's a monthly chart of the dollar. Now, we can take this from a couple of different angles. Obviously, the dollar's been under pressure. It's been a shit show for the dollar for the better part of a year. They hate the dollar. Nobody wants to own the dollar. Ironically enough, at the time when everybody hates it, it comes into the monthly chart, 100 period moving average. Let me zoom out a second and show you something just to take a different view than the dollar's going to zero and we have to buy Bitcoin, gold, silver, whatever else because nobody's going to want dollars. Let me give the opposing argument. That may be the long-term result, but let me give the opposing view because there is a point in time when it will change, but for now, it's probably still the best house in a bad neighborhood. We've all heard that before. When you pit it against all the other currencies, if you had to go to one of them, where are you going to go for the last resort? They're still coming for the dollars. That will change sooner or later, but today it's still the best house in a bad neighborhood. Now we've zoomed in on the chart to get a better view, a more multi-year view on this multi chart. Is it possible? Would there be a huge argument if we did something like this? We had a move higher and then basically they went sideways to lower in a bullish, flaggish, wedgish, consolidation, eating time off the clock type of pattern. 
maybe they come down here to the 200 period moving average on the monthly chart. You can see I have a line here. There's a method to the madness. I didn't take the line off the chart before I shot the video. I left it there for a reason. Because if we found the dollar down at around 85, 86, I think that's a buying opportunity. I don't know that they get there, but why can't the dollar be doing this and also be poised to eventually break out and get a better retracement from this high to this low? And the short answer is the reason why is because it can. There is no reason why it can't, I should say. Or there is no reason why it isn't necessarily doing that. By the way, can I be wrong? Yes. Where am I wrong? Well, here it is. Below these lows, and this is a monthly chart, so you have to take this as a long-term view. This isn't something that you can trade for a week. That's not the point. We're doing a lesson. We're talking about the dollar. We're having a bigger picture view. But if you lose these lows down here, and for the monthly low, we'll call it 84.24, and you close below there on a monthly basis, that's a whole different ball of wax. Also, when you look at the monthly chart, you can also make a case that it's on time into the 100 period moving average. How's that? It's found in the course lazyeminitrader.com. Last but not least today, we'll cover the GDX. I know there's a lot of traders out there that like the GDX, and if you're on the right side of the GDX, you can make a lot of money trading the GDX. So here's the deal, and there's a method to the madness. Usually, the GDX is a leading indicator of what gold and silver, to an extent, are going to do. And the reason I throw silver in the mix, because they're generally going to trade together. Not to the same magnitude, not each and every day, but in large part, they're going to go up together on the big scale, and they're going to go down together on the big scale from a longer term perspective. Well, if in fact GDX tends to be a leading indicator of gold, why is it below all the moving averages? Why is it riding the 50-week moving average? Well, until and unless the GDX on a weekly basis starts getting above its 20-week moving average, there's still potentially some pressure to the downside. By the looks of this chart, if it is in fact a leading indicator, what it's telling us, and you can make a case that this is a bearish, wedgish kind of pattern that will result and culminate in lower prices or another leg lower. If all that is the case, then there's potentially another leg lower for gold and silver before we get on to the longer term uptrend. Just thought I would throw that out there, maybe stir up the pot a little bit for some controversy. With that being said, have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? Without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're going to pull the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.